I'm the genius Asian. Welcome to the genius family. Today, I'm going to show you how to solve your car battery problems. On this topic, if you follow other people's videos, their suggestions may work for your car or they may not, just don't know why. In this video, we will show you how to test and explain to you the why part and fix your problem with certainty. Picture this, you are ready to go out somewhere and you can't start your car. Wouldn't you know it, the battery is dead. There are three possibilities. We will list in terms of decreasing probability. One, the battery wire connections are bad. Two, the battery is bad. Three, the alternator is bad. First, let's look at the most likely problem, bad wire connections. Most people know a little bit about cleaning the corroded battery terminals. They use baking soda, a toothbrush, or sandpaper. These may all work, except one thing is missing. How do you know you have done a good job cleaning? Take this example. I've cleaned it very well. I've used sandpaper to clean this lead pole. It looks very clean and quite smooth. I connect the battery charger to this battery. The battery supply voltage is over 13 volts. Note that I first measure between the two clamps. It is over 13 volts. But when I measure the voltage between the two lead poles, it has only 11.4 volts. It should be over 13 volts. If you keep charging the battery like this, it will not work. If I measure the resistance between two points on the surface of a single pole, it has 1500 ohm. This high resistance reduces the current to a few milliamps, too little to start the car, or it may take a thousand days to charge the battery. You look at the lead pole. It is quite smooth, except the color is very black. The black layer is so thick that the sandpaper is no longer effective. I use a screwdriver to scrape. See? You remove the black layer and expose the shining metal color. Let's measure. It is 24 ohm. Much better. Let's clean more and measure. It is a perfect 0 0.1 ohm. Let's measure the voltage between two poles. It is over 13 volts. Now you can really charge the battery. The important lesson we learned here is to trace the wires to make sure all the connections have very low resistance. Next, we look at the battery. The first important question we want to answer is whether the battery needs charging. This $10 hydrometer can test the specific gravity for the acid of your battery. It answers one and only one question. If the meter shows the specific weight is too low, that is, it's in the red area, then you need to keep charging. As you keep charging, the density of the electrolytes increases, which means the specific gravity of the electrolytes increases. The greater the concentration of sulfuric acid, the more dense the electrolytes become. If it reaches the green area, your acid has enough density and you can stop charging. So the hydrometer can tell you whether the electrical energy is converted fully into chemical energy. The lead acid battery has two components, lead plates soaked in acid. The hydrometer can tell us the capacity of the battery, but due to other bottlenecks, this capacity may not release high enough current during the first 10 seconds of cranking. If the effective lead plate area becomes too small due to sulfation, it may not provide high enough current during the first 10 seconds. So another test for a good battery is to provide high current cold cranking amps, or CCA. We use this battery tester to apply load. The battery is discharged at 100 amps to estimate the battery's ability to provide the current needed. We set a timer with 10 seconds, start to apply load, and watch the voltage drop. Stop the load after 10 seconds and see if the hand bounces back. If it is still in the green area after 10 seconds, then it is good. Otherwise, the battery may not provide the needed current. You will notice cranking is sluggish. While the hydrometer measures only one thing, the full electrical energy stored, when a battery fails a load test, there are two possible reasons. The first factor is whether the chemical energy is fully determined by the hydrometer. However, while this is a factor, the load tester cannot accurately measure the battery capacity. 
The second factor is the battery's internal resistance. A battery load tester can measure this pretty accurately. A larger resistance could be caused by a low battery fluid level, and so you just need to add to distilled water. A larger resistance could also be caused by hard sulfate crystals formed at the lead plates. You can use a charger to desulfate, but a smarter charger like this may not work. You need to use a manual charger set on a slow 2 amp setting. If it is in bad shape, once charged, you discharge it with a light bulb, then charge again to repeat this cycle a few times. You may wonder what is the difference between the hydrometer and the load tester. If the hydrometer shows the liquid is not heavy enough, you should continue charging. If the hydrometer shows the liquid is heavy enough, you should stop charging. But if it does not pass the load tester test, then you should discharge it and restart the cycle. What if the hydrometer indicates that the specific weight is not increasing? This could be as a result of high battery internal resistance. To resolve this problem, you should turn the charger to a higher current. Remember, don't use a smart charger, use a manual one. If the current is too low, such as just a few milliamps, it may take a thousand days. If you can't overcome the internal resistance, you can add some Epsom salt. Some people swear that Epsom salt can revive a car battery by removing crystals on the plate. I know that Epsom salt increases the electrolytes, thus overcoming the internal resistance. But this only increases the charge current. It doesn't dissolve crystals. And don't add too much Epsom salt, as it may only heat up the battery instead of charging it. Since Epsom salt can't dissolve crystals, the only way you may be able to knock some crystals off the plate is by repeatedly charging and discharging. The combination of hydrometer and battery load tester can help you determine if the battery is fully revived. If you don't have a battery tester, you can turn the high beam on to simulate high load. Although the high beam's load may not be as high as the load tester, you can still estimate the health of the battery. If you don't have a hydrometer, you may use your voltmeter to see the voltage change once you have ad added some load. The voltage meter is not a completely accurate way, but using it is better than not. If the change of voltage is too fast, you can videotape it. Then play back the video on your computer to see the voltage falling rate. This is not very accurate, but it can tell you the relative difference for each cycle you charged and discharged the battery. Third, if your battery keeps dying, then there are two possibilities. First, your battery may be too old or damaged and you need to replace it. Watch my other video on how to replace with the least cost. Second, if your battery is relatively new, it is possible your alternator is not working. To check that the alternator is good, after you start the car, you need to disconnect the battery cable. See? When the car is running without the battery connected, this means your alternator is good. A battery does not last forever. Sooner or later, you may have to replace it. But you can delay the replacement and thus save money. Share this with people who you know that need it. Leave your own genius tips in the comment section below. Don't forget, I'm the genius Asian. Subscribe for more useful videos.